Okay, now that we have InDesign fired up, let's go over the design elements. Now, this right here is an example page of a magazine. It's actually a mock magazine layout that was used for an upcoming book trailer for an author that I work with pretty much every year for her upcoming books. And so this was actually a movie prop, but it works very well for an overall design. So the first element of design is line. And when we're talking about line, there's a lot of different ideas here. It could be something as simple as a stroke, or it could be the way if you have hard lines or contour lines, uh, dotted lines. For example, these right here, we have some lines breaking up this block quote. If you look at this photo here, if I zoom in really quickly on our photo, you can see we have a curved line here. And the reason for that is it provides a nice contrast between our harder lines that we have here and then of course the line that you have around this text. So even though this isn't a physical line, the way that this breaks up your white space does create a visual line. And then of course you have a bunch of lines right here, lines here for your rectangle, and then we have more of a slanted diagonal line. Now this is important because it just adds some visual interest in terms of lines when you're using them in your composition. We could have just stuck with rectangles, we could have stuck with circles. There's a lot of ways you could have gone with line, but I like to vary things slightly. You don't want to overdo it. So you see that you have your traditional kind of straight lines here, and then a diagonal line here really helps to break that up. And then you have the use of line in terms of negative space. You're dividing up space. So for example, if I were to remove these lines really quickly, you could see that we have a lot of white space around this text. And that's okay, but if I undo that and bring them back, you can see that they add a, a nice visual touch to this block quote. It kind of highlights the block quote without overdoing it. And it does help break up that white space with a design element, which is line. And then again, the way that your text is laid out in this space also creates a line. So if I were to zoom out here, you can see that whether we're using diagonals, straight lines, curved lines, and how we place them on this composition really helps to direct the viewer around the page. And that is really key whenever you're placing pretty much any of your design elements. But line is a great way to create movement throughout your document. So the next item when, when we're talking about design elements is color. Now color is a huge, huge way to create visual interest in your document. Now you can see here that we have a very easy going color scheme. When I say easy going, it's easy on the eyes. It's not too bright, it's not too dark. You have a good complement of white, grays for emphasis, but then you have pops of color. Now whenever I work on a design project, I always have the color that's going to dominate the image, and then I pick a highlight color from that, and then I pick a darker color, and then I pick one color that I'm not going to use a lot of. And in this case, we're talking about this pink here. You only see it in two places. Now granted, the blue is also limiting, but the pink is really that pop of color that you only see in those two places. And gray has a lot more dominance in regards to the layout. But wherever you see the gray, even though the gray is a dominant color, it's also in dominant items in the shapes that we have. So you have gray down here and gray up here, and then you, you kind of break it up with some color. I'm not a fan of just using one color throughout an entire document. It's key to pick a color family and then always throw in a highlight color that matches your overall design, but also it gives you some variety. For example, this this pink right here can easily be a complementary color to my blue and my gray. It doesn't have to be pink. And I, I usually try to design in ways that allow me some creative freedom. 
so that if I need to go in a different color direction, my whole design isn't necessarily ruined. So that's one thing to look at in this design is these two colors can easily be changed or interspersed in another way. And then what you want to think about in terms of color is your primary colors, your secondary colors, and your tertiary colors. And that is really going to help you pick the colors that you want to use. Now your primary colors are your red, your yellow, and your blue. And your secondary colors are a mixture of two primary colors, including green, violet, and orange. They're also a way to get some more vibrant colors into your red, green, I mean your red, yellow, and your blue. So it gives you a lot more color options. And then your tertiary colors are formed from your primary and your secondary color, like for example, a yellow and a green, a red and a violet, and a yellow and an orange. So those are the three main color areas that you're going to work with. And if you keep in mind what those are, the best thing that you can get is a color wheel that'll help you find some really good complementary colors to use. For example, this blue and this pink are very complementary. But at the same time, you can go with a blue and an orange, which is opposite each other on the color wheel. That would be complementary as well. So would red and green. And so would purple and more of a gold yellow. Those are all opposite each other on the color wheel. So those create some very pleasing color palettes to work with. And then the next item that we're going to discuss when it comes to the elements of design is shape. Now shape is another element that creates some awesome movement in your final composition. So when you're looking at this piece, you can automatically see that we've created some nice geometric shapes here in our design, as well as duplicating that down here. Once you're kind of set on how you want to use your shapes, it's really important to duplicate that and not go overboard with your shape. So as you can see, I stuck with some very clean, sharp lines, which in the end makes this piece look very modern and very clean. And that's the look that I was going for this particular piece. But if you had a lot of organic lines, that works too. But it's important to kind of keep a, a good idea of how you want to use shape to define a certain area. And basically you have the option to use geometric shapes like I have here, or again, organic shapes, which will give you a little bit more curves and a little bit softer uh, finished composition. The next thing on our design elements list is texture. Now, we don't have a lot of texture in this particular design, but when it comes to texture, it's a visual texture in print design. It's not physical texture. But one thing that you can consider in regards to texture is how the paper or whatever your finished product is going to be printed on, how that comes into play. Because paper really can have a very degree of texture and that may affect your overall design. If you have a real simplistic design, then you may be able to go with a very textured paper because it's not going to take away from the design. But you have something like a magazine page and you're going to find that people tend to print those on very clean, very shiny, glossy type paper because it doesn't detract from the content. You want people to read it. So if you put too much texture on the page, it's going to be really hard to read. And then we have space. Space is the beautiful way that you take all of these elements and you lay them out. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you in regards to design is always use enough space. You have a limited amount of space on your two-dimensional design and you need to think about how all of these elements are laid out and how they interact with each other to create the look that you want. The more space that you have around your elements, the easier it is to read and it just all in all kind of gives you a very pleasant feeling. To demonstrate what happens if something is too close to the edge, I'm just going to take these elements and shove them way too close to the edge, not considering what that space around the edge. Now immediately you actually kind of have a physical reaction, do you not, about that being way too close to the edge. You crave more space in there. And that's really important to consider because I find that with a lot of new designers, they tend to forget about all of that space around their elements and cram things really close together and they're really close to the edge. You don't want that. You want to consider 
having a lot of healthy space between your elements and it just creates a polished and much easier to take in final composition. So that is a look at the elements of design. Again, the elements of design are those key pieces that when put together, create your final composition. You have line, which can be either a stroke, it could be your text, or it can be a physical line on the page. Color, having your primary colors, your secondary colors, and your tertiary colors all provide you with a luxurious color palette. And picking colors is key to having a polished, finished composition. Followed by shape, which again will help guide the eye around your image. Different shapes can be either geometric with really hard lines or they can be organic with curves and really soft lines. Texture, which in this case is either going to be visual texture that you create with patterns or it can actually be real texture, for example, the texture of a piece of paper or whatever your finished item will be printed on. And finally, space. The space that you have to lay out all of these elements and then the space around each of them to create a complement to your final piece. So now that we've looked at the elements of design, it's time to look at what the principles of design are and how they work with the elements of design to either create a successful or not so successful finished design.